Parliament. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Mary, can I please have the roll call? Kyle Cardio? Here. Hillary Costa? Here. Fiona Auger? Here. Jordan Day? Still here. Travis Escobar? See. Ryan Vancourt? Here. Rebecca Allen? Here.
So you guys are going to have to give me a minute to crunch some numbers if we do any amendments. But other than that, I just in positive and warm spirits say get work done. Like I said, be proactive, be analytical, and be considerate. And that's all I have for my announcements today. Thank you, Treasurer Jordan Day. I have two leads. Joseph Sherry is requesting a lead for tonight's meeting. He has a rehearsal at a spring musical. Motion. Motion by Nicholas Rose. Second from Representative Allen. Is there any discussion on the lead? With no further discussion, those favor approving the lead say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. 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 Division. Okay, never mind. I take it back. Any abstentions? By a pass vote, motion passed. By a vote, the post vote. Uh, dear Mr. Speaker, I would like to request an early leave for 8.15 p.m. I have a psychology exam at 8.30 a.m. Robert Sanchez, can I get a motion? Motion. Motion from Representative Rose, second from Representative Sanitary. Is there any discussion on that? Um, yeah. Just as a reminder, if you leave, we need that packet back, so you have to give it back to me in initial give that we received it. That's all. Thank you. Uh, with no further discussion, all those people approving leave say aye. Aye. All those say no. No. Abstentions. 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 And the motion passes. We're okay. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure. And there's no other leave, so let's get down to business and budgets. And uh, let's call in AMA. Treasurer Joe Day. They're not here in the room. $215, it was 
232 was 75, 236 it was 200, and for 239 fundraiser it was 500. The only two line items that were cut out of the entire request were lines 111 and 112. Um, they were recommended $50 for line 111 and $10 for line 112. And as of right now, they're asking for an additional $50 allocation in line 232. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that's all you've requested at this time? Well, I, I mean, on something. top of it, yes. yes. Okay. On top of the initial request. So you want an additional $50 on 232 and the first two line items to be changed back to what you were originally requesting? Yes. Okay. Continue. All right, so I mean, I see that we were recommended ten dollars for postage and mailing, and personally, you know, we've done a lot more um, mailing for our, on behalf of our group. And when we send in memberships, it costs a lot more than ten dollars just to send those memberships in. I don't know if fifty dollars is, you know, that might be a little too much, but we definitely would need more money in the advertising and pretty much just advertising for now. Um, I mean. I think fifty dollars for office supplies is fair, but I mean, like I said, we're trying to really grow, and we keep getting less money each year. It's you know, it doesn't help us grow. We need more money to grow as a group, and you know, we have a track record that says that we put in the effort and we participate against other schools, and we just have for a small school like Rhode Island College, we do a lot more than many schools. I just think that the amount recommended is not enough. Yeah, as Justin was saying, membership is our big priority this year because we go to this collegiate conference and we compete with schools from all over the country. Schools that have 200 kids in their marketing association and send 50 of them to this conference. So for, in, in order for us to compete with these big, high power schools, we're going to need to build awareness for ourselves around campus and then transfer that to all over to this conference. So if you're consideration, you know, we'll really, we won't let you down. We'll continue to do awards, we'll continue to break ground in this conference and really make Rick shine. And it's international, so it really does a lot for it. Yeah, it's good. It's great publicity for the school itself. I mean, we go down there, we represent the school, and, you know, like I said, we have a total of six combined awards in the last two years, so we're not lazy. We put in the work, and... All money that is given to us is spent in good standards. Anything else? Treasurer Day. Okay, so um, just so everybody knows, I have up to date printouts of their budget and from what was printed out back in February. Um, for advertising, I can validate that they have used a significant amount of the money. They used $41.50 out of advertising and that was back in December and I know that you guys are using more I already like I talked to you guys enough. Um, however for <coughs> posted shipping and mailing and so lines 111 and 112 I can say that no money as of right now has been spent out of that unless there's a check request that's being submitted for this week or next week. So from finances standpoint those lineups were unused and that I can say yes I know that you have mailed things um, but they have not been paid for and those things do come out at the end of the semester so that's something that everybody has to take into consideration because it's part of billing from our office and Ms. Dehobia can correct me if I'm wrong that everybody gets billed at the end of the semester for those things um, so that's one way to interpret it but the I mean I can speak for the organization themselves that they deserve um, all the credit that they are like everything that they're saying is true they're, these students are very talented individuals, and for their organization, for their ability, they deserve our recognition, um, but when it comes down to the books, I'm, I look at the numbers, and I'm just telling you, as of right now, the two line items that were cut by the Finance Commission were untouched, and still are untouched, and line 232 has been used significantly, so I would like to see what Parliament has to say, but... Right, as of right now, um, there seems to be a logical argument for what they're asking. Okay, we're going to go with the uh, Finance Commission. I'm going to check it out. Uh, my question is, do you guys, um, you guys only requested 75? We gave you the full request. 
Um, so we're just, I'm just kind of curious to why it wasn't requested at that point, the $50 well, increase. Well, to answer that question, um, when we went down to the conference this year, we had a lot of first timers, so we weren't really expecting to do that well, but we still came out with two awards, and the overall thing that we learned from that was that the first timers really have you know, a lot of energy going into next year. They want to really do well, and I think a main like focal point for them is going to be increasing membership, and that's going to be really difficult with what we requested initially before going down there, which was um, back in December or so. Yeah, exactly. So you had filled out the budget report before you went down to the conference? Yes. Okay. And I just want to add that we do have plans to use some of those postage and mailing things. I do have receipts from when we, when I use my own money, I was hoping to be reimbursed in the future. So it's not like we're not touching those lines. We are using them, and it's not like we're just requesting more money just to get more money. We do have reasoning behind it. Comptroller Tyler. Yeah, I would just like to suggest maybe uh, reallocating some money out of speakers and films because that has not been touched yet. So if you guys like to advertise a little more, even this year, you could come to finance and ask for a reallocation and move the money from speakers and films if it's not going to be used there and put it into advertising. Maybe you can get into advertising and send it this year. And uh, perhaps if you're going forward to next year, because I see that we awarded you uh, $200 for speakers and films next year. So you know, if you'd like to maybe reduce that by 100 and move that 100 into advertising, so you could use your funds differently there. Now I'd also like just to let you know, like you know, next year if you guys find yourself strapped for money, you are always allowed to come to finance commission and ask for more. You're, you're never not allowed, so you know, don't don't feel like that. Well, that is good to know. This is like the, yeah, it's not like the end all be all. That's all you get ever. So like, if you guys do find yourself in a need for more money, you can always come to the finance commission and make your plans. Well, I mean, fortunately enough, we were we were fortunate enough this year to get some speakers who weren't you know trying to sneak in there and just coming in past students or whatever, you know, talking about their experiences out of college. So that $200 is there kind of as like a safety net just in case we do want to bring in a professional development speaker who does request some sort of compensation for their time. And this year actually we're thinking about throwing our own conference. One of the things they recommend you do is all the chapters, they can host their own conference, they can bring in speakers, they can bring in other chapters from the area. So that's one thing we were really considering putting in our letter plan. So that's the one problem about taking that 200 from the speakers away. I mean, it sounds like a great idea, but that would kind of stop to that point. That's all I've said. Vice President Hillary Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So Jordan kind of addressed the question I had, and Tyler kind of touched on something that I might have suggested. So my only question now is, like, as far as advertising goes, what avenues have you have you utilized? Because it's like AMA's ads. I'm, I'm trying to think of where I might have seen them. I don't know if you're doing on campus or, or if you're doing them in other publications for marketing. I'm trying to think of. Well, we're doing mostly around campus. We use the printing services over at Crickley, and that's where a lot of our advertising money came out of. Okay. We held a um, video resume contest earlier this year, mm -hmm. and we used a lot of that money to make the advertisements oh. for that. And then we created some kind of half flyers in the same mm -hmm. uh, location. So, I mean, we, we you may not have seen them initially, but they were around campus, and we do have plans to do more of that kind of like guerrilla advertising, just kind of getting flyers out there, getting information out there. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Representative Rebecca. I pass. Representative Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Say advertising is a very important for an organization, and it's good to see that you have plans on um, use advertising, especially when it comes to printing um, at the copy center. That can get expensive to move flyers you um, print. Um, so, with that, I would like to make a motion uh, to increase line item 232 from $75 to $125, bringing the total request um, to 1285. Second. That is a motion by Representative Lino and a second by Deputy Speaker Brian Bettencourt to increase line item 232 by $50. Is there any discussion on the motion? With no further discussion on this amendment, 
All those in favor of approving this, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. 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 Who stated no? Can I raise your cards? Uh, so we have Nicholas Tavis. 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 I used to do it all the time. I'm sorry. I apologize, Arthur. Uh, Tyler Dean and Jack Bell. Any abstentions? And the amendment has Back to the original list. We're going to go to Secretary Gianna Pogger. Pass. He took it by thunder. <laughs> Representative Santer. Thank you, Speaker. That's five. My only question for you guys is what are you sure of current membership level? You said you guys wanted to double it next year. I was just curious what it, what it is now about the weekend. We have about 15 active members. So those are members that come to every meeting and try and participate as much as they can. So we're hoping to at least double that. Uh, yeah, I would just like to say, I'd, I'd much rather see that money moved from uh, speakers and films to be put towards advertising. You know, like, I, I understand that you like having it there as a safety net and uh, such, but you know, next year, if you guys do put together a solid plan for a speaker or performer to come in, you know, and it, it seems extremely valuable to your group. You know, I can't speak for the Finance Commission, but we do tend to pass that if we do say so you have a solid plan in place for, uh, for an event, for a speaker. And, you know, $200, I think you could, you could easily chop that down to 100 and move that into the advertising just to give you more money in the advertising if you truly do plan on utilizing it. I think we all need that in the in the speaker because we're kind of planning a whole entire chapter revamp after being at this conference this past year we've seen what other schools have had what it's taken what they've done so this this coming year we've actually decided to have kind of like an entire rip ama revamp so we're trying to actually get as much involved in everything as possible we're not really trying to reduce in any areas um, so we're going to need we need the money in the speakers as well well I, what i would recommend is just first actually having and the place for the like particular speaker and such. Like I know you, you guys plan on you know doing all this, but I would just like you get the, the plan in place, and then you can like you know start to figure out what the costs are, what you can do, what you can't do. Now with that, I would just like to make a formal motion to move hundred dollars from speakers and films and place it in tablet. Okay, guys. Pretend I'm not here. You could have just asked her. Sorry. I did math wrong. Yeah, I know. 
Those were all the issues that were addressed at the budget hearing, and I can, I can say for a fact that they were addressed at the budget hearing, and I hope that my committee members or commission members will reiterate everything I have just told you in, in order to echo my sentiments. With that, I'm done. My name is Commissioner Member and Representative Over. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know, we didn't cut just from certain groups. We were cutting all over because of the economy right now. That's what we need to do. Um, every group's got cuts, whether they were level funding, asking for more or asking for less. Every group got cut somewhere, whether, and not every group's not coming. So we do apologize for shocking you guys. Um, with what I also wanted to say was that a lot of the things that we cut were the 300 from uniforms and things for the uniforms and stuff, because you guys need to come to us for those next year, um, were items that we saw that weren't being used. And we, um, if you guys were to come to us next year and be like, we really need more money, um, as you heard us tell the other group, come to us. If you're really strapped, like, we'll, we'll gladly give you more. Just show us a plan. Show us that this money is going to get used. That's what we want to see. We want to see you guys are using the money. And that's why we cut from certain line items. <coughs> so. My major issue, and again, I, I completely understand why you're cutting plumbing, mm -hmm. which is, again, why I didn't ask for any more. Uh, but we base our requests on the assumption that by not asking for any more, we could keep it level, and um, that these were appropriate places to transfer money. As such, it meant that we transferred money away from things that we couldn't use it for in the assumption that we'd be able to use it for stuff like uniforms. Now that that is gone, we have significantly less money uh, in, say, advertising than we had before. Uh, that we would like to have more money in that. The only reason that we took it away is because we thought we could get something for something else. You denied us that, which is totally fine, and, and you explain why you're denying us that. But because we transferred that money over, <coughs> and we took it out of other line items, can we put more money back into those line items? Um, I say that if you show us you're going to use these things next year, like start using them, show us that you want to use them, you're going to come to us and ask, come to us and ask us for more money. Show us you have a plan. Because right now we're looking at the numbers, we're seeing what you guys have used, and you guys haven't used everything. You guys haven't used a lot. You guys have used, I believe it says $183.16. And that's a very little amount of money out of the budget that you guys have. That's all it's saying? That's, I've see, I see that you guys have used I just want the opportunity to be able to move this money around. Um, and again, 
I completely understand why money is cut. Everybody has to do it. That's what budgeting is. That's why these meetings are held. Uh, so, like, I just, again, if you're taking money, that's fine. I totally understand. I, uh, I hope that you're doing it for the best reasons, uh, of course. And again, if you decide not to vote on this, I'm not going to be angry. Uh, but I, I just want to make sure that my organization and the events that we hold for everybody is going to be able to be maintained the way they have been in the past. So what would you like to move around? You said you um, I mean, it, worst comes to worst, our food budget is what we put the most money into so that we have, that's our, that's our backup so that we can move it into other things. Um, but because a lot of our events, one of them being a uh, Thanksgiving event where we buy a lot of food, the other being game night, which is happening this Saturday, which we buy a lot of food, uh, it whittles it down considerably. So if we were to take money out of that and put it into other line items, then it means that we <coughs> hold those events. Um, again, I'll make work whatever you give me. It would just be a lot easier, and I think that we could hold much better events uh, with a little bit more money so that I can keep the food budget where it is. Otherwise, I will just move it around. I know that's the most convincing argument I can make, saying that I will be uh, doing what I can with what you give me. So not the amounts, but are you happy with the placement of where the money is right now? No. Where would you like to move it? I would like to move more of the money into advertising and into uh, our DVDs because those are expensive. And those are really the only thing that I have on here that isn't just our events. The events affect everybody. Everybody can go to the events. Everybody can participate, donate money, and enjoy our events. DVDs is really the only thing on here that I can have assigned specifically for my organization, and because they give so much, especially to these events, I like to be able to give them some <coughs> um, Okay, so what, which line items would you like to move some money out of into those two that you were interested in? The only thing that I even have that I can move money out of would be the food budget. Okay. And that's why it is so much. Would so you like to do that right now, or would you like to keep it where it's at? Oh, I would absolutely, if I had the opportunity to, I would do that. That's, if you guys are going to vote nay on giving us a little extra. How, how much would you be interested in moving out of food and advertising in? May I make a point of information? Um, just before we move anything to advertising, you guys realize you get 300 free dollars from student marketing at the beginning of the year. Yes. So if we're adding, so you you want, a lot of we're our giving you 100 right now, and you want to move more into it. So theoretically, you'd have 400 in the fall. Then you want more on top of $400? A lot of our advertising, they cannot do. Okay. Um, because of the nature of our organization, we do a lot of skit-based things. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if any of you guys happen to notice the tons of things running around. Um, but a lot of, basically, the members of our organization, the, without a better term, I can say are, I was going to say actors. <laughs> they're, they're all characters, and they like to dress up. Again, we made costumes to advertise for our so event. Bad. And okay, we fair enough. Huh? That, that, that answered my question. I just wanted you guys to know what you had. Yeah, no, I understand. But again, uh, marketing can provide us with that. That makes sense. And, and the skills needed to do those types okay. of things. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Dean. No, that's okay. Control Dean, did you want to continue? No, uh, with that, I'm going to go on the floor. All right. Uh, uh, Allen. Okay, so you have $1,900 left from your budget. So, I don't understand how if you have $1,900 left and you put it in a budget for $2,100, you assume you're going to spend the money. They cut your money because you weren't spending it. Why do you need more? The, and I explained this at the uh, first the budget request that when I made that, it was I wasn't spending a lot of money with my first semester because I had just been elected president and I had never been in that position before. So I really just wanted to do as much as I could using as little money as possible because I wasn't comfortable with doing that. Now I'm far more 
comfortable because I know how the process works. To be perfectly honest, I, I, was, I didn't know the process before. I couldn't spend money because I didn't know how to. Uh, and as a full-time student with a, uh, a part-time job outside of the school at the time, I didn't really have a lot of time to come in and learn the process and uh, do all of that. Now I know over time I've picked up a few things. I've had people let me know what's going on. I've had meetings. I've gone to all of the uh, or most of the uh, roundtable discussions, and uh, now I know how to use it, what's there, uh, which is another reason I wanted to keep the book. <coughs>
So make sure you guys know that. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on the uh, amendment? No further discussion on the favor of approving the amendment. Say aye. 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 say no. No. Representative Rose says no. Any abstentions? Are no abstentions. Aye. The amendment passes. We're going back to the original list. Representative Santeri. Uh, thank you, Speaker Espaugh. Uh, Attorney Day pretty much covered all the questions. My other question to you guys is... Excuse me, Representative Santeri, actually, uh, Treasurer Day, would you like to... I just uh, wanted to ask if there was any other line item that you wanted money in, what line item would it be? Um, other than uniforms, because uh, we all, we covered that. Uh, and, and other than advertising? Yes. Again, I would put it into the DVDs, because that would just, just be good for the well, our members. Well, so the price of this would have any fees in particular? Pretty much the one that we have probably for about like one. Okay, thank you. I just wanted that information. Yeah, I appreciate it. Sorry, Robert, Secretary, back to you. That's fine. Uh, Treasurer Day pretty much covered us when I was asked about when it comes to the whole thing here. Another question for you guys is what is like currently your active membership? So members of Palmer have an idea of just how live the organization is. We have active members, probably uh, 20 around that area. We also have, are those student activity fee paying members or are yes. they all students? Yep. Okay, well, I've you. got about 20 students. Okay, thank you. I was going to say not including the uh, alum that have returned that still come and, and uh, are active. And we have some non-students who contribute a lot of time <coughs> to, uh, they just come in and help out. For instance, recently with the making of these costumes with the skit, we had people who don't even come here helping us so. Uh, going out and buying stuff uh, for us just because they're nice people and they like to help the uh, organization. Um, what, what are those the same costumes that, that were out on the, on the quad this morning? Were there the uh, by D for uh, Pi Zeta then? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's all I got to say, Mr. Speaker. Okay. In the future, can we pretend comments to the budget? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, Representative Goldberg. Pass. Chair Bay. Pass also. Carvalho. Pass. Adamo. Pass. Any further discussion on the budget that is amended? With no further discussion on the favor of approving the budget, say aye. 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 All those say no. No. Representative Rose says no. Extensions. And most passes. Congratulations. Thanks. Next up, Anthro. Guys, this is Anne Pose. Introduce yourself and explain what your request is. Hi. Um, I'm Anne Hart. I'm the president for Anne Pose. Um, I'm just curious to request the change to the line item for Clamping. Um, we're asking for, we asked for $800. We're going to change the amount we're asking for for $50.55. We're changing the amount we're asking for because this is the amount that was actually allocated to us recently by the Finance Commission for this year's clamping. For a background on clamping, um, it's an event that we have every year. It's open to all of our members, any students at the school who want to attend, alumni, and faculty and staff. Um, per the agreement we reached with the Finance Commission, we charge students $5 and faculty and staff $15. We also charge anyone who attends the full cost of the lobster if they want it. Um, we are also going to be advertising to the entire um, campus community. That way you can get as many students to come to this event as possible. Thank you. Who wants to be on the list? They don't want to talk about this, do you? Charge of that. That's Dean. <laughs> <laughs> No, I know. I just wanted to know if you had anything to say. Um, so from what I can gather, it looks like they're requesting to add in what the amount was, that was allocated by the Finance Commission earlier this year. Yes? Okay. Um, I know a huge problem in the past, and I, like this is going to be reiterated, I'm sure, that a huge problem in the past was whether or not students were truly benefiting from it, which is the reason why it's been really important for us to advocate for charging. Um, but the reason why, as far as any time I've ever been on the commission is the reason why it's always been a dollar, is because we want to make sure 
that the funds are being used appropriately and we want to check in. And that's something that's supposed to happen with 263s and 262s is that we're supposed to get a report a month in advance. Um, so I recommend that if you do allocate this funds, these funds and amend the request tonight, whomever is treasurer next year, because they're either sitting on this body or probably watching or know what I'm saying, um, I recommend that you strongly enforce the one month report beforehand so we know what's going on with the organization's monies as far as this event is concerned. If that, again, that's all contingent upon if this happens. That's all I have. Control the theme. Uh, yes, I would just like to, uh, <coughs> the reason why we didn't include it in your budget this year is because it's not yet viewed by the Finance Commission to be a very solid event. You know, even this year you came, um, it's about a month ago you came for your request for this year's uh, clan bank. And we, we raised numerous concerns. And you know, for an event to be really solid, we like to have you know a strict plan, something that we can't even raise concerns with because that's how airtight it is. And that's that's really like what we look for if we're gonna go as far as to include it in your budget for next year. So we do the one dollar just to make sure that you keep putting it on consistently and that you're putting on a good event for your members. And um, a big problem with this event is we're we're very concerned about it being exclusionary because it is off campus at a professor's house in the backyard. And um, you know, I'm glad that we finally got the lobsters to be charged for it because it is quite lavish and quite costly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, you know, like we just want to see you come back next year as well with the solid plan. You know, that, that's why we put the dollar there. We don't want you to not hold the event. That's not not at all. <coughs> Okay, Control Dean, you're done. And there's no further discussion on the budget. Do you have anyone else? Okay, Jarvet. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, off of what Mr. Dean said, you know, the lobsters that we are charging, you are charging for them now. Um, but it is a luxury and it is being held off campus. And um, like we said, that is kind of an exclusionary event. Um, so that's really our only concern about opening up to, you know, all of our students. So. The reason we have it off campus is because it involves digging a hole starting a really big fire, just so everyone knows. Um, I don't think they'd actually let us do that on campus at all. Uh, we would completely be willing to do it with the quad, but. <laughs> 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 Any further comments? <laughs> One last chance. Any further comments? No further comments. All those in favor of approving this budget as is, say aye. 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 All opposed say no. 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 Representative Rose and Finance Commission Member uh, Gervais and Goldberg says no. Any abstentions? Rebecca Allen abstains. Treasurer Day abstains. Representative Sanchez abstains. Motion passes. Um, I was just going to say that 
Um, the, that was the only, only line item we cut was the request for BCI to be paid for. Yeah. Um, as far as I, I can recall, I don't have it right in front of me right now. Um, but the reason why I personally, not the commission, I personally don't agree with funding that is that the BCI lasts for you longer than you're in the organization. Um, we don't pay for resumes to be printed. We don't pay for um, your personal things to be mailed out. We don't pay for personal study guides. Um, and we also have another group on campus that need background check, background checks done by the state. And we also don't pay for those. So there's enough precedence here to say that it's the student's responsibility if they want to be a member of the organization that they have to get their background check and they have to get it done and paid for by themselves. I understand what you're saying and I totally understand that these are hard times and that $40 is a lot. I Believe me, some days $5 is a lot. I totally get that. Um, but I can't validate paying for certain students to get it when there are other students in other organizations that may need it. And then it's for your personal use and it lasts you longer than your time in the organization. Um, and that's for your own personal benefit. Um, while it does achieve the purpose of the organization, I personally just can't agree with it. Um, whether or not the commission changes, whatever Parliament says, that's up to them. Um, and feel free to be mad at me. It's okay. I respect your feelings. With that, I'm all done. I'm just to My question is regarding this morning I was I'm in teaching program. I just recently helped with it cost $5. Mm -hmm. this? this is actually a federal and background check, and what it does is it looks across from state to state. The idea is if you're a criminal, just in Rhode Island, the one that you thought will find you, if you're a criminal in California, it won't detect that. Oh, it's a federal? Yeah, that's why it's more expensive. And they don't have any collaboration like with the colleges, college students? Uh, we tried, but the um, police, Department, they don't pay for um, um, volunteers. Oh, volunteers. Because I know I helped one through the VA hospital, a federal one. Yeah. And they didn't charge anything. So I didn't know what certain volunteer programs that you can get a waiver. That's what I was wondering if this will apply. Yeah. It's like clear remarks for everyone's answer. I have two questions. First is, is everybody who's in your organization, do they have the checks already? Do they, do they have the background checks? Yes. Everybody, yes, you can't, um, you can't interact around these kids without the background checks. So this would be for students who are going to join next year. Okay. Um, my second question is, is there anybody who is a prospective member who can't afford the, is that why you're doing it, or are you just trying to be preemptive? So, the idea is um, the more you charge for a service, uh, the more expensive to make something, the less amount of uh, people are going to join. So now that we have a $40 price, we saw at least 15 less than last year, and uh, we've been trying to subsidize them. This year, we uh, this year we try to subsidize some people, but at it hasn't been really working out that long. Okay. Does that include your remarks? Yes. Purpose of the Finance Commission member and the others. How many active members do you guys typically pick up each year? How many active members? Sure. Um, let's see. This year that we had, I would say, uh, this year totally we had 45, but we went down from recruiting about 25. I'm estimating here, I don't have the exact figure, I'll get it to later, but till about 16. So we lost about nine potential mentors. They came into the seminar, and we, um, we had a lot of people come to like this training program that we had, but since after we told them um, $40 that would cost, we had much, a significantly less joined this year than we did. <coughs> so you had 40 plus people sign up to joined the program until they found out that there's a forty dollar fee, you lost a lot of members. Correction. We we have forty in a body. I think we had about thirty, twenty-five to thirty joined for the training program. 
and we only had about 16 joined. Okay. Is that clear your remarks? Yeah. Treasurer Day. Um, so I have two questions. Are you required to get the federal? Yeah, it's a law. And I, I, well, I wasn't sure if it, you had to get federal or if it was you had, could also only get Rhode Island. So that's why I'm on that. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't no longer get by with the BCIG. Okay. And then my, I don't know if this is even a question, it's more a comment. Sure. Um, I know you guys said you tried subsidizing yeah. for members, and I don't know how you did that. So I'm just going to blindly turn my head at the question right now. Sure. Um, that's for all of Parliament to see, so you want to recall me, go do it now. Um, I recommend fundraising yes. more than I, like, I will stress <laughs> fundraising is such a great way to subsidize the budget that you already have. Yes. Um, you guys have events. I know that you guys have events specifically with your mentors or your mentees. Yes. Um, do you ever do anything with their parents? Parents, uh, the parents involved with not to get money from them, but no, we have but, breakfast. But what I'm, we, go ahead. We have a uh, breakfast where we meet the kids, uh, parents, mm -hmm. and the mentees, and we all get along. But that's after they join the programs, and the mentor paid for them. So. Understandable, no, but I what I'm saying is that there has to be another way for you to, there can be another way, there, not that there has to be, but there can be another way for you to raise money in order to cover it versus <coughs> us paying for it. Um, that's my personal opinion. Right. Again, not the opinion of anybody else in the room, just me. Um, but I think that fundraising would be the way to start. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it's canning at local stores um, and asking them to donate for your organization, that's fine. Um, organizations do that to go on conferences all the time. Um, it's within your right to fundraise and cover additional expenses that aren't covered within your operating budget. So that's something that I just wanted to give you that, that information. Um, I don't know if it's going to benefit you right now, but and I don't know what Parliament's going to do, but I want to give you that knowledge so you can at least walk away with something else. You said a problem was that um, you made a good point that these background checks only last, last us longer than we'd be at the college. Mm -hmm. We'd be willing to sub, like if we could just um, subsidize it proportionally. So if it will last, I don't know, let's say 10 years, and we're not asking to pay the whole thing, if we just get subsidized for the life that the students will stay here and have a bad chance, so they can join our program, then that, they, it wouldn't be more than the person use it, just so they can be with us. I think at this point, it's kind of hard to measure something like that, though. That, that, I don't know if it is measurable to count, like, at the beginning, if you're paying for something to determine the length of a time that a student will be using the organization. Does that make sense? Well, for us, it is, it's kind of easy because if you're a sophomore, then they stay to their junior and senior. Only uh, exclusion would be if they were to leave the school early. But they stay here. We have them for the next 19, even for the next year. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying, but I, I guess I also have another follow-up question. Sure. I have lots of questions, I'm sorry. All right, I have lots um, of questions. Um, the question that I have is for the work-study students that work with Henry Barnard, right. do they get their BCI paid for because they also work with students, or is that something that they pay for out of pocket? Yeah, they do. I have more study. So, from what I'm gathering, the <coughs> information that my president is having, is that even teachers and work-study students have to pay for their BCI themselves. Um, so, I totally understand why you're asking, yeah. but I just can't validate only paying for some when there are others that are also in need for the same reason. Right. I'm sorry. Okay. Can I conclude your remarks? Yes. I asked a question on Dr. Donald. I'm just going to be completely honest, right. and everyone, this will probably change everyone's opinion of me really quickly, but sure. if this gets passed, I will be your first member next year, and I have one semester left at Rick. All right. Okay? So you, you just don't want people joining your organization for that reason. You, you want people to want to be around kids. Teachers want to be around kids. I'm a teacher. I want to be 
Oh, I'm nice. studying to be a teacher yeah, around kids. Right. You, know, do you understand what I'm saying? Um, I, I don't think that uh, we're not beating people for uh, background checks. We don't tell them up front. We're not like, hey, come to us. We'll you will pay twenty dollars or your forty background checks. I well, I would have to disagree with you on that. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll agree to disagree on that. All right. So I believe your remarks. It does. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Carvalho. My concern is that if this was to approve for you, then we would have to approve other organizations as well, who have been denied numerous times, many times. You know? I mean, it doesn't make sense to accept it for you right. and not for the others who already have come across the same issue. Right. So she says, adding this price to join our program has a direct relation to the benefit that we can have. We have 25 Henry Bernard students that would like a mentor, and we have mentors that we can match them. So we can add a benefit you know, to the school, to the society. It's just that this price is kind of adding like, um, like a barrier to us. I would do fundraising. Fundraising is an awesome option. There's right. so many ways that you can do with fundraising to raise money to help sure. subsidize it. I would like to see some motions where the people on the list are to not keep repeating what's being said. But for Travis Howard Vessel, um, I would like to know if there's any way to you know, subsidize it. Maybe we don't have to pay the all 400. Can we just go halfway 200 and make them I'm not sure, and also I was a, a point of information. Um, you know, what's the other organization that you said that applies back on checks? That's an inquiry, and it is the Cooperative Free School. Okay. And I just want to know why we don't do background. They're required to do background checks because they interact with a ton of children, um, all the board members and I, the I understand that, but I understand the reasoning of why we don't pay for it. Besides the fact they've that requested it, 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 I just they've been requested and they've reject, been rejected. I don't have the logic from previous organizations or previous finance commissions other than my story to you. So I conclude your remarks. Yes. yes. Bonds will represent thousand. Yeah. How does the the background check process go about? I really don't know. How does the background? All right. So you go to a police station. Uh, I did a BCI check. You go to the police station. Uh, you listen to forty dollars. They, they do a background check for all fifty states. It doesn't take very long. Uh, does he have fingerprints? Does he have fingerprints? Oh, familiar. I personally had a five dollar one, and actually I had to go to the federal. I'm about saying I just want the twenty dollars. I'm just saying it's a lot more appealing if we can offer the twenty dollars to help yes. out. Isn't there a way that you? Just pay for it directly. Like, instead of handing them out the twenty dollars, <coughs> and then they go and get it done themselves. Is there a way you can just make sure that that money is used that way, like get a credit or something, like pay in advance? Is that possible? I, I don't know.
Representative Warren abstains, and the motion passes. Such is approved as is. As is.
Now, just for my own personal information, um, would it ever be possible, please don't make me sort of be angry, to cut down to one advisor in order to, because from what I've gathered over the years that I've been here is that it's not always consistently the same advisor all the time. Um, that the, I think some people are put off by the fact that they come after the issue is done, which I understand because you can make corrections for the following week, but why can't they come and make changes for that week so when that week it goes out, it's, it's more beneficial for you. I, I see it that way. I'm probably wrong because I'm not in the newspaper business, so <coughs> don't worry about me. But I think something that I've heard from other people is that if it's not consistently the same person, is there any way to go from one to two or switch them a semester? So you have them doing one semester, you have one person, one semester you have another. So they're still both getting the opportunity and you're getting different criticism from different people and you're benefiting from different perspectives, but at the same time, you're not using student activity fee paying money to go to non-students. That's my perspective. Like I said, I'm not the only one in the room. Um, but that's all I've got. Okay, um Oh, I, I, I'd really like to address that. Uh, we've toyed with the idea, um, or we've thrown around the idea of removing one of the freshman advisors, um, but we've also toyed with the idea of keeping one of the ones that we're currently using and adding someone who has a uh, more knowledgeable uh, base in the creative side. Um, and our conference that we went to more than a few weeks ago we actually met someone from California, I believe it was, who is willing to do that for us. Um, and you know, we've been doing this obviously with the internet via Skype or something, um, but he would be giving us a professional hand with how our paper physically looks, how it's laid out. Um, the only issue, I guess, financially uh, with using one advisor instead of two is that they would, I guess, be there. Uh, necessarily for the same amount of issues as the other person. Um, so, for instance, uh, Jim Hummel comes in for half the issues, Doug comes in for the other half, they alternate weeks. Uh, today we had Jim Hummel and next week we'll have Doug. If Jim had to come every week, I'm sure he would want similar compensation to double the workload. Um, but I guess that's just a logistic standpoint. But uh, well, that kind of clarifies how the process works is that you use they get paid the same amount every month to do equal amount of work, which would be the same if they worked separate semester, like if they worked one semester, one person, one semester, another. Yeah, I mean, they, they essentially each one will make three thousand dollars. They'll get fifteen hundred one month. They'll get fifteen uh, one semester, fifteen hundred the next semester. Um, but if they're doing, um, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. Say put Jim on one semester, Doug on the other. Um, but I think at that point it would be a point of consistency, mm -hmm. at least for year by year. Um, so, And as far as bringing them in while the paper is being produced, I think it's a matter of, uh, of timing, really. Um, our production really is not a one-day process. Uh, it runs from, I mean, all week with the writers getting their stuff in. And then Thursday is our first deadline day, or Wednesday night. And so we go from Wednesday night to Sunday. Um, and then while we're actually on campus putting the paper together, it's usually Sunday afternoon into evening into the night. And I can say this last issue, we were here till 2 a.m. So having someone here till 2 a.m. Um, would be, I don't think, feasible. Or I don't think, uh, I don't think it, yeah, I think it's feasible. Um, I have a couple questions. First one is, do they <coughs> set the price of how much or is it like money that you decided that the anchors said that is going to be given to them, like as your gift, as your gift for helping them helping? We we basically say we can give you only so much, and you know years ago, when, whenever a student is shopping around for a professional advisor, um, they first want to find someone that's going to fit their organization right. But they also want to find someone who's willing to do it for a reasonable cost. And uh, while I had no hand in choosing uh, either Jim or Doug, when I was at CCRI, I was the editor in chief of their student newspaper. 
and we picked up a professional advisor, and we got someone that not only we wanted, but someone that would be willing to do it for the price that we were able to pay at the time, um, which we were very lucky. Uh, so there's, there's a bit of, I don't want to say negotiation, like, hey, yeah, I'll do it for three grand. Well, we can only give you one, and then going back and forth. But I think what they get for their time um, is very reasonable, uh, especially considering they're, they're, you know, they're currently employed you know, in the field. You know, Jim is still doing his, his job with his website and doing investigative reporting. So it does cost him you know, time and money to come to our organization. I have just one other question then. If we stay, say to keep what the Finance Commission has uh, requested, would this be something since it's kind of like you offer them like this is what we can give you, would this be something you could negotiate with them? I would absolutely try to negotiate with them. Mm -hmm. um, however, I would not expect either of them to stay on board. Um, if I came to them and said, we can't give you what we're giving you, but we can give you 25% less, I don't think either of them would stay on board with us, um, which would obviously be a disservice to us, I think. And then trying to find someone to fill that void um, would also be difficult. Do you think you could find somebody, though, with that money? Like, if you have over the summer looking for someone, do you think it is possible to find someone with the money that we have recommended? I think it's always possible. Mm -hmm. um, but for the value, for the dollar that we're getting now, Secretary Auger. Um, yeah, so I'd like to make a formal motion to amend item 240A to $6,000, bringing the total allocation request to 85166. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second by Randy Darrows. Is there discussion on the amendment? Anyone raise their cards for this amendment? clarify on Representative Goldberg's point, um, and maybe a little bit on Treasurer Day's, was that I think that, personally, I don't have a problem paying for two because they're so qualified, but I think um, if we're talking about feasibility, I think if you're there until 2 a.m. on a Sunday, could you ask them to come in on a Monday, and then maybe you print on a Tuesday? Is that something like changing the schedule so that they look at it before it goes to print? Then they can tell you what to change, you make a change, and then it goes to print. Like, obviously, I don't know how the whole process works, but if we're talking about utilizing them for their skills, I think if they're coming after the fact, you're not getting the full, you're getting like, well, this could have been improved. And I understand, you know, the effect of going into next week, this is what we can improve for next week. But if you improve the product before it's put out, I think that's an even better message that we're sending. So have you ever considered changing the way that the, the print, that the newspaper goes to print so that you can confer with the people that you're paying? We, we have considered doing something similar to that. Mm -hmm. um, and the, my concern is that <coughs> the paper would then be you know, one day later uh, arriving on campus and be sitting on news racks for instead of Monday through Friday, from Tuesday through Friday. And if the publisher, um, like in recent weeks, our, our distributor has brought the issue later than usual, um, it's not getting on stand until about 5 p.m. So we would, in essence, be killing the first two days of the week. And then I think that the student body in the community as a whole would be missing out on what it is that we're trying to give them and would then less justify what we're doing. No, I understand. So. My other question though is, um, I'm going to ask you something about printing on them when we get back to the main motion. Um, but in your experience at the conferences, how do the other college newspapers operate? Do they have professionals that they can confer with and what is their printing schedule like? Um, that's a really good question. The, the conference gave us a really good opportunity to see uh, really what we're up against. We want to look at it in, in terms of competition. Um, a lot of college newspapers is a standard operating. Um, and they all have professional advisors. Uh, some of them have the benefit of actually having a journalism program. And it's part of their curriculum in the journalism program to be a part of their newspaper. For instance, URI is one such school like that. Uh, and so the students who are writing are getting a grade for it. The students who are designing are getting a grade for it. So their professors are more qualified to be, you know, their professional advisors, so to speak. Um, whereas we have a faculty advisor who's unpaid, who you know 
has, he's a biology professor. Um, does he know InDesign or Photoshop? Most likely not. Um, does he know how to write a news piece? He's a good writer. Um, but there, there are things that, you know, home would have to be for us that we can so. And then I would just follow up that question. Um, going back to your comment about the availability of the news to the students, which I also agree is very important. Um, but could you say that you could post the articles on your website first, and then the print version arrives on Tuesday? So they're still getting the news that they need to get, but then they're just getting the print version a day later. That's that's my only suggestion. I think it's something for them to think about because obviously, you know, it's very important that they understand what's going on on campus. Um, but I think that they also would like to know that their tax dollars essentially are being spent effectively. So that would be my suggestion if you were to go, you know. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. That is my suggestion. So <laughs> take it as you may. Where does that cost? My only question is um, how much did you say Treasury Board they spent so far out of that 6000 And are they expected to spend the entire 6000 for this year? To reiterate what I said earlier, they have spent the entirety, almost the entirety. They have $750 left, which is enough for one more month. Okay. Which is April, which is this month. So now, the money is that. Representative Carson, is that for sure? Yes. Um, okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, I just, I'm going to take like the moral standpoint, I guess, and say that I support what the Finance Commission originally decided, which is the reason why I'm speaking against it. Um, I think that there are ways to change the procedure, and that's why I I think the Finance Commission agreed upon that number in the first place is that not only had money not been used, but there's another way to make it more beneficial to the paper. And as of right now, that from an outsider's perspective, I can't speak for everybody, but um, this is, we'd like to see more effective use of your advisors and the money that we're paying them to create a better product. We agree that your product is good but we want to see growth just like anybody else. And we've had the same two advisors for how long now? Somebody, somebody in the room has to know anybody? Uh, for uh, Hummel and, Hummel what was his was name? Hummel's new. I think Doug Hayden was two years ago. We had to get rid of Rudy Cheese. But, um, so these are two new people for you, and that, that's a good thing, but the fact that you had the same person, not that you can control that, since you're only new yourself. <laughs> um, but I think it's something that you should consider is looking at the way it's done versus the people that you're using, because I think that that will change how finance views it, and I think it will change how your product comes out. And that's my personal opinion. can't speak for it. Could, could I reply to that? Um, we definitely thought about, um, well, we're going to evaluate our professional advisors mm -hmm. this year. Um, I don't know if that was done in the past, but that is going to happen. And I'm of the mind to, if we have to get rid of one of them or both of them, and we need to replace them, I would like to get as much for the money that we have as we can. Um, if that means having you know, four five hundred dollars and having to find a couple of people who are less qualified, then you know it is what it is. But if we have the 6,000 and we can go get three or four people, and we can get people who can look at content, people who can look at layout, um, I think that would really move us. Is there a question? Yes. Um, the only other suggestion I had, other than completely allocating another $1,500, was to reallocate money out of your revenue, um, specifically sell ads for the purpose of fundraising for the difference. Um, we all know how I feel about revenue policies. <laughs> Funny. Apparently nobody else thought it was funny. <laughs> 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 I love it. Um, I think that something that finance has been really strong on, and I, like I said, I, I hope to speak for them in this aspect. I can't speak for everybody because there are people who are members of your organizations. Um, but it's good when student organizations are subsidizing their expenses, and I think that that's something that, as an alternative, I'd like to see. Um, to make sure that you are benefiting from it the best. And I, I, something I actually just told another group was, show us or tell us how it's benefiting you, because we don't see it on a regular, like, 
you guys see it as a group, but we as a body don't see it. And I mean, yes, we see improvements, but overall, like week to week, I'm sure that there are things that I probably, I'm like, I don't even know what this word means. Um, and they probably can tell you that. I, I think that there's a time and a place for these advisors, but I think that the Finance Commission had a valid point in what they did, um, which is why I also bring up that alternative. Um, whether or not that alternative gets put to use is ending this book. Yes. Sorry. <clears throat> I think six thousand dollars for somebody to play Monday morning quarterback is a little much, personally. I mean, you're having somebody come in after you've done it and say, "All right, this can get fixed or that can get fixed," and then potentially having them say the same thing subsequent weeks. <coughs> Excuse me. Three thousand bucks a semester <coughs> to do that is a lot, and I think. With the 4,500 they allocated, you could find somebody to do just that if you want to keep doing just that. So I just, I don't agree with it, I guess, is the final Can you represent Alan? I will pass. Next up is Vice President Hillary Costa. Nice. Okay, so a lot of my questions have already been answered at this point, but it looks like you guys are kind of hungry, so I'm going to give you some food for thought. Um, so I was a new staff writer for the Anchor back in October to about Fe October of 2011 to about February of 2012, and sometimes I go back in the Anchor archives and I look at my first article and I'm embarrassed. And at the Anchor meetings, I would go to the staff meetings every week, and Jim Hummel like <coughs> paid special attention to my work. And he sat down with me and he would tell me how to work it out. And by the time I, my career was coming to a close at the Anchor, I was writing investigative pieces about Donovan Dining Center. And I got a front page story for writing the Holiday Tree riot that happened last year. So just to testify that, these, that, that Jim Hummel, anyway, is a reputable advisor. And he, and he really instilled improvement. This is just a personal. Um, anecdote about how it, it you know it helped me and, and my abilities and I think also that we're forgetting I well not you're forgetting strike that I think also that it's important and I'll respect the Finance Commission's recommendation you guys have looked at these budgets far more than I have if you feel that's respectable fine but I think and I've I, actually a project I tried to I've been trying to work on the couple, past couple of months and I've talked to Dr. Kane about it is trying to get a journalism concentration in the uh, communication department and I tried talking to the department chair Dr. Min about that and he said that it's been brought up multiple times and for feasibility reasons cannot happen. So I think that having these professional advisors and people from the field is really important to help students because getting a degree in journalism isn't the isn't like the deciding factor when you go out and look for a job. It's the experiences you have in the in your portfolio that you put forth at the end of the day. So Take that to munch on for a little bit. My personal anecdote and the fact that we don't have a journalism program here, but we also have a thriving media center. That's all my remarks. Finance Commission Member Goldberg. I pass. Representative Santeri. Thank you, Speaker Escobar. I have no terrible plans to remake these box. First, I'll just go straight to it. Um, two things I'll just say first, or three things. One, I'll just point out for full disclosure, I am currently a member of the Anchor been a staff writer for two years. So take whatever I say with a grain of salt in my uh, The first thing I'd like to say is that the money, well, first off, I just to clarify the Finance Commission or the Treasury Day, correct me if I'm wrong. The original reason why they did not get the $6,000 full that they have in prior years is because of the paperwork not being done in terms of something, somebody get paid or whatever have you. And that's the reason why the Finance Commission looked at numbers and said, well, they're clearly not using this. Clearly, we're going to cut it then. Uh, so being a former Finance Commission member, that's why I presume the logic was. They can correct me if I'm wrong, but I just want to make sure, first off, that's the reason why it originally got cut, not because of any other reason. Um, I mean, do you want clarification? Yeah, well, that's the first thing, yes. Okay. Um, so, first, uh, it was one of the factors oh. that was brought into it, so I can speak in that in full honesty. Mm -hmm. Second, I can say without disclosing any information that there were people who wanted to cut it further. Um, there were people who wanted to grant the whole thing. Um, and last but not least, <coughs> yeah, nothing. Okay. 
<laughs> Thank you, Patricia, for that. And my only other remarks are, you know, when it comes to two field professional advisors, I don't, I don't, I don't have had the uh, opportunity to really attend too many anchor meetings having run my own organization. And so, what I can gather, though, having attended a couple, is that having a professional advisor is very important thing. Obviously, in the future, if the anchor wants to try to fix, you know, what they or, or, or uh, remedy or change, what they want to use the phrase with the professional advisor, that's one thing. But I think that considering that both of them do them a great service by going in there and going over the paper, issue article, article, actually with the technical meeting today, and they went through every single article and gave critique, something that you really can't get elsewhere. So I, don't, I know that the other thing is too, as Jim pointed out, is that it's hard, especially as an economy, for anyone to be taking certain negotiation deals and stuff. And I wouldn't want to see the quality of the paper suffer because they don't have um, two different opinions, because I feel like, especially if it's the same single advisor every week, eventually that advisor um, critiques can maybe not, not I don't want to say job, but like, can, can they, they won't offer as much as perhaps two different opinions. And obviously, it's tough to put a price in terms of, well, how much is good enough to get paid for the amount of work they're doing, because you know, it's not set amount of hours or whatever. But that's all I have to say on the subject. Thank you. Finance Commission member Tab. Yes. Um, I just, if I can, I'd like to make a motion to call a question. Motion to call a question by Representative Tab. Second by Secretary Auger. All those people calling questions say aye. Aye. All those people say no. No. Please raise your hand. Uh, Representative Rose only said no. Abstentions. And we have one question on the amendment to, uh, to bring 248 to $6,000. All those favor of approving this amendment, say aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. 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 Division. Everyone who is in favor of this amendment, of putting 248 to $6,000, please raise your hand. I had 
to make an educated guess, I would say that most of the papers there were weekly or bi-weekly, mm -hmm. and they were far fewer daily papers, um, and there were far fewer monthly papers. Um, and the, the two critics that we went to for advice um, were, not only had glowing things to say, but were impressed with the amount of content and the design quality that we put forth for being a weekly paper, which is um, a lot of work, and both of them. And as I can attest to personally, it was a lot of work. Um, so uh, your earlier question was about uh, print costs and uh, how we determine that. We've, we're currently, we have sneakers. Uh, and it's a great feeling because we have three companies that want our business. And as the editor-in-chief, I have a good say in what we do. And I can tell you right now that we are looking to change the format of our newspaper to save some more money. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not that actually comes to fruition, there's many factors. However, hypothetically, if you were to change our format, uh, we could save a little more money in printing. And we've already taken measures to reduce the amount of issues that we print this semester. And at the end of this year, we're going to evaluate our numbers again and see if we can cut back even further. Um, I, I, I do want to say that going into the next uh, the next year, that Andrew's made a lot of attempts to cut back uh, spending. And I think we've cut somewhere in that neighborhood of about $12,000 from our budget, um, which was considerable. Um, and that, a lot of that comes from an editorial um, you know, stipends, um, but we've, we've done a lot of construction, so we are looking to see. No, well, thank you for those answers. Um, so I have, t I have just two issues, um, and one of them is that, I mean, obviously you've had a change in leadership, and I feel like um, it's, it's consistent throughout, you know, not just your executive board positions, but kind of your subsidiary boards, let's call them. And I feel like a lot of that has to do with stress, and meeting deadlines, things like that. So have you ever considered going bi-weekly for that reason, not, not just cost alone? And then um, my other obvious issue is that, um, Travis knows because he's with me all the time, my two biggest things that I notice all the time are the inspection dates in the elevators and <laughs> how many newspapers are around campus. Um, because, I mean, you go into Donovan and you have stacks in that, in that corner. And, I feel like that's discouraging to you guys because you're like, well, my readership's low, Where's my, where are my readers? And it's discouraging to me because I'm like, well, so, as, or any random student who just decides to be informed one day could come to me and say, where's my student activity fee money going for you know, X org? And they could have just walked by and all these papers are piled up. Um, and I think my freshman or sophomore year, there was even an article in the Anchor about uh, creative ways to use the Anchor instead of reading it. Which, I, it might have been part of the canker, but I don't find it funny because you should be reading it. You shouldn't be using it as a rain hat. You shouldn't be using it as a placemat. You shouldn't be using it to scrapbook. It's money that we pay for. Like, I, I mean, we rip the articles out because they're about us and we like to archive them. Um, so those are my two main concerns, and uh, I don't know if you want to address those because I kind of have a, a formal motion in mind if anybody would like to address it, but I'd be happy to hear what you have to say. Oh, absolutely. Um, as far as uh, turnover positions, um, we currently have, I want to say, two people on our editorial board who have been there since the fall, since the beginning of the fall semester, uh, in the same position. Um, other members, like myself, uh, moved around. I went from news editor to editor in chief. Um, and as far as people leaving, I mean, it's to be expected. Um, it's smaller organizations that have maybe eight or ten members. Uh, having a couple of people is detrimental, but these are fixable because it's just a couple of people. Um, you know, we have on any given week near 40 people that are that are you know, uh, contributing, and so while the the turnover may seem like a lot, uh, a lot of members that leave do come back, mm -hmm. and a lot of members do jump from one position to the next uh, in terms of necessity. We do have an entirely new executive board from the time we started. So that's four people um, that have a change in a lot of her opportunities of growth. So I think it's it's normal for student organizations to go through that. Um, and as far as the issues that are lying around on campus, I see them too. Mm -hmm. And 
it's very discouraging. And like I said, we, we already cut back this semester 10% uh, of what we print, number-wise. We were 3,000 copies each week to 2,700. And I can tell you right now, at the end of the semester, that number's gonna drop even more, um, which is gonna save us more money, hopefully. Um, if I have anything to say about it. You know, if I'm not on the next year's exact board, that number could go up, I, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but as far as I'm concerned, I would like to see there be um, some accountability for what's being printed, access, overage. Um, but we do keep track of those numbers, and we are okay. Well, that's 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 great. Um, I'd actually like to make a formal motion to cut printing down to thirty thousand um, dollars. If they're already looking into changing it, I don't think they need the full forty-two. Um, and based on the research that's coming out, I feel like if they're being suited by three other companies, they can pick one that's cheaper than the one they have. So that's the motion I'd like to make. Motion to turn printing to two thirty-one. Is there a second? Second by Representative Allen. Discussion on this amendment. Raise your cards if you have discussion. Uh, Representative, Representative Horton. Yes, um, as speaking of the business manager of the uh, organization, um, we do, um, in that number, we are now starting to account for the commencement issue, mm -hmm. which is roughly $5,000. It's not um, related. Yeah, it's $5,000. <laughs> um, uh, in years past, they never did put that into the cost. And even by reducing down to our even our lowest quote, that would just cover our commencement. So we don't have to ask for more money. In the past, we have, or we have just covered that revenue. But now, like I try to plan ahead for it, and that's why that number stayed the same, even with the reducing of the papers and the lowest quote. So. May I respond? Um, I feel like you know we hear you guys told other groups, well, you can come back if you need more. I think if we cut it now, and I, it'll cover the first couple of issues, you obviously don't need the commencement $5,000 in September. Um, and I feel like that's something you can come to finance for. Uh, if that's what we're telling other groups, then it should be the same. Um, what is this? Okay. Um, so, I mean, if, if I think with the, the motion I made, that it's enough to cover probably the issues in September, you can correct me if I'm wrong, and if you feel like at that point that you won't have enough money, then you can come back like every other group. But that's just my that's my opinion on it. And if the commencement issue is five thousand dollars, you don't need that until April, which I would feel like is another thing you could come to finance for. But that's just my opinion. So you'll the floor back to you. Oh, it's um, your floor anyway. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like if we would just put that in for it'd just be the same point. So I'm, I guess I'll we'll just finance commission member Andres. I think cutting five grand from the allocation request is kind of a large amount to send them the budget. Um, I understand that they can come back and request more money, but why don't we take fifteen hundred dollars, considering we're putting that into the field professional to make it the status quo? That's just my idea. Okay. Like, Factored in 
um, to this new breakdown of printing, which I totally, I have no opinion on, um, oddly enough. Um, but, I mean, that's really all I have, is just some information. You're welcome. Hey, Treasure Day, there's no one else on the list. I feel like 12 is a little much. Um, I don't like to make the amendment to the amendment. Um, yeah. I'll I'll motion the for the amendment to the amendment for, say, 40500 That is a amendment. And a second by... No, no, no. I didn't mean is there a second to this amendment? <laughs> is there a second to this amendment? Representative Bessel, you second it? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> and that was to change it to, what was that? What was the thing again? $40,500. Basically taking $1,500 from the um, and printing to what we gave them their professional advisor. Okay, so for the discussion on this amendment. favor with uh, Representative Lima's proposal, and I'm pretty sure a uh, finance commission member uh, also agreed with that recommendation, so thank you, Speaker Esquire. President Becky. Um, I would say 5000 because that is what Treasurer Dave just said, um, <coughs> and we also gave them the $1,500 in field professional, so I don't know where anybody's getting that from. We gave it to them. Um, $5,000 is, I, I will, you know, amend my motion to that, but I don't know where we're getting the $1,500. let us give it back to them because they got it back. Let's be clear. Thank you. I'm all set, Mr. Speaker. Okay, Treasurer Dan. Just as a point of information for Representative Martin and anybody else who doesn't know, and this is not to put anybody on the spot, but Mr. Medeiros was not part of the recommendation process, so I'm not, he's entitled to his opinion. I respect his opinion. He has a valid input. But just to give everybody perspective, um, everybody else on the board was at Finance Commission recommendation. So that was it. Any further discussion on this amendment? No further discussion. I'll in favor of approving this amendment to bring to 31 to 40,500. That would be a change from Pecky's amendment of th to cut all the way to 30,000. If you're in favor, say aye. Aye. If you're opposed, say no. 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 Everyone who's in favor of that amendment, raise your comments. We have five in favor. All against? Fifteen. Any abstentions, which I'm pretty sure we'll have Representative Rose, Representative Gosling, Representative Santeri, Representative Betancourt, and Representative Ford. And with that, the motion fails. We're going back to then the original amendment, which is ranked to 231. Mr. Speaker, am I allowed to amend my own motion? <laughs> I was just thinking of Can I make a friendly amendment to my own motion? You can. I'd like to motion to cut $5,000 instead of the original 12, Mr. Speaker. Is that acceptance from my body? Okay. Did I bring it to 36? Oh, no. 37. 37. <laughs> Any discussion? On the amendment. Representative Diaz, would you like the floor? Point of personal privilege. Uh, the concert's too loud and distracting. Um, there's no way to stop it. So could, if we could please speak louder so everybody in the room could hear. Um, I, the concert's too loud, though, for everybody. I think, you know, it's just too loud. <laughs> any any discussion on this amendment? Representative Bessel. I just don't get why I know he's coming here because he's unsatisfied with the budget, but I don't get why we're actually cutting more money out of it than what we use recently. recently. Okay. Well, just to address that, why are we? I the body is entitled to change any any uh, budget that's in front of us. So whether or not he was satisfied or dissatisfied after the First Amendment doesn't mean anything. Parliament is completely entitled to change any any request that's in front of us. 
well, I understand what you're saying. What's the point of cutting if they are only if they're requesting to add more money? Um, it's just that it, it is the prerogative of the body to change it at their will. Sorry. Anyone else that would like to speak on this amendment? With no further discussion on the amendment, all those in favor of changing line item 232, I mean 231 printing, 237,000, please say aye. 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 All opposed say no. 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 Division? Mm -hmm. Division. Anyone who's in favor, please raise your cards.
patience. I genuinely appreciate your kindness in waiting. Um, please introduce yourself and explain why you're dissatisfied with your current budget. Hello, my name is Anna Christine Bonali. I am president of the um, Our Hills and Akron in Future Elementary and Early Childhood Teachers. Um, we are published on the Akron. We welcome many of the agents that work with children and have a track with the children, including the newest school development. Um, in our budget, I am hoping it's a typo. If it's not a typo, I will go into further detail. But um, I'm going to go to 263A and 263B. Um, we requested $100, and we only received $1. I'm wondering if there is a decimal point error. I can say with sincerity that it is not an error. <laughs> and can you justify the move? Because those are our two of our biggest annual events. Um, I'm going to let some of the commission members speak on that. Um, I'm going to let Goldberg and then Dean go, because Dean, you've been talking all night. Okay. Oh, yes. So you're talking about the Toys for Tots and the Family Day Campus Fall Fest events. The reason that we only put a dollar in them is because in your budget for this year, we see that they haven't been used yet. And pretty much when we put a dollar in the line. Can you just, just a little bit? Sorry. That's okay. Um, we put a dollar line item, line item, line items are still open. We just we want you to come to finance next year when you're planning the events with concrete, what's going to happen, what your plans are, and how much money you guys need. And at that point, you bring us fully planned out what's going to happen. We'll gladly give you the money for them. We want to see these events happen. We just didn't see them happen at, um, and reflected in your budget this year. So we want you to come to us next year and show us this is what we're doing. We're doing everything you want us to do, and we will gladly give you the money to put these events on. We just want to see the plans first. All right. Um, this is my first time at So, as has been previously stated, that we have to give more plans in advance for the events because I don't believe that. This. I, I can clarify. If you're talking about what I said earlier about annual events, is that what you mean? Um, or what she said. Well, you said that Good the way I understood it, that you want us to come into the meetings and tell us ex explicitly we're going to do A, B, and C, and that's yeah. going to look like this. Well, you know, uh, we have finance meetings, you know, during the semester, yes. and we put a dollar in the light items so that we, they're still open, they're okay. still there, you can still have those, Yes. but it's so that you come with us with, the, with plans and say how much money you're going to need, and if we see that your plans are concrete, and we see that you really thought it out and you're planning it up, we're gonna give, we'll give you the money for those events. Okay. We just we haven't seen that the money that was given to you last year was used for those events as as the budget that we're looking at right now. We don't see them being I'm used. I'm surprised because we actually had the choice for how we last year and this year, and I have pictures with you. You, um, you might have pictures with you. It's just in the budget that we're looking at. We don't see that the money was used. Nothing was ever paid for. Yeah. So do we have no like bill? that has been paid for in our records. So if you guys are needing money for that next year, all you have to do is you have to go up to SCG, ask us how we'll help you fill out all the paperwork, you come to finance, show us your plans, show us what you need for money, and we'll give you the money to do the events. We just want to see plans first. We want to see if this money is going to go to use and not sit in a budget for another year not being used. You want to understand? Yes. Any other questions? Um, <laughs> well, I'm hoping it because of my misunderstanding. We could maybe at least get 50 just for this semester because we are planning on the community events. Or if we could get some. For this semester? Yes. This, this budget is for next year. It's for the 2014, 13, 13, 2014. 14. Oh my god, I'm skipping okay. a year. Um, so, how will this be amended until next week? Or this money won't be available until next semester. All right, being August. Yeah, when the next semester starts, that's when this money will be available to your organization. Okay, so come August, I have to come back and say we need X dollars. Yeah, if come the first finance mid committee meeting, you guys are, let's say for Choice to Talk, you guys already have your plans, you know exactly how much money you're going to need, you come to us with the, you fill out the paperwork up in SCG, you come to us, you explain it, you show us what you're going to do, we get excited for you, we give you the money, and you do your event. It's just like that. 
Well, just out of curiosity, I mean, I, I've never filled out forms like that. We, we've come and we've spoken about our events. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I've ever filled out forms. So why did we get $100 for the past two years, two semesters? Yes, yes. I can't speak on that. I was not finance at the time. All right. Well, well, I can speak on what was allocated last year. Okay. You were approved allocation for funds last year because there was a bill paid out and there was shown use of the funds. <coughs> there was no shown use of the funds this year. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Uh, which is the reason, if I know Tyler has something that he's going to say, but I'm pretty sure I think that's the reason why, um, is to make sure that you are using the money because I don't. I checked with our administrative supervisor, Mr. Hobiak, and there have been no bills paid out. So we don't have a Donovan bill for you. We don't have a bill for any movies. No one's getting reimbursed. Nothing of that nature. Okay. okay. So what are the next steps for you? Um, can I desire if I continue to answer? Yeah. Okay. So basically, you sit down with your group at um, at the beginning of next semester. You figure out all your plans. You come see. Joan or Mary or anybody up at SCG, the, the treasurer, the new treasurer, who we don't know who will be yet, um, they help you fill out the paperwork and they walk you through going to finance. They'll walk you through it. I was new to being treasurer this year of my organization and they walked me through it. So they'll walk you through it, get you the right steps to get you the money that you need for your events. Why they're saying come back with a plan. Does that make sense? So you'll have to come back with a plan saying what you're ordering um, and all of that nature. Okay. And is there a formal a financial request? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'll talk to you. Do you want to step on my office tomorrow morning? We can do the All right. Well, then email me. Or I'll email you. Okay. <laughs> do you have my email? Yes, I do. Am I just <laughs> Not right now. That's creepy. <laughs> Anyways, on to important things. Okay, Representative Goldberg, look at the floor and uh, Google to your mark. Before we go on to the next person, I have two leads. Uh, Representative Gosman had to leave the meeting early. Uh, his ride came. Uh, his ride came to bring him home. So okay, a motion and push. Motion for Representative Terry, second for Representative Gosman. Is there discussion on the leave? No further discussion on the leave. Also, if you leave, say aye. Aye. Uh, say no. No. Extension. No. Well, who's raising card? If you said no. Uh, Treasurer Day, <sighs> Tavis, Commissioner okay. Tavis, uh, Comptroller Dean, uh, Representative Burke, uh, Secretary Auger, uh, Representative Allen, <coughs> and abstentions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Abstain, most passive. Nicholas Rose, he needed to request an early leave from the meeting at 9.05. The reason why is because he has to finish his geography class. Uh, can I get a motion? Motion. Motion from Robertson Martin. Is there a second? Second. Second from Robertson Martin. Any discussion? No for discussion. Those favor approval leave say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. 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 I'm going to. Does that need division? Cards up for no. There's a lot of no's. Okay. So we have Becky. Yay. Travis, 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 Approving the leave. Approving the leave of Nicholas Rose. Thirteen. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Thirteen to nine abstentions. No abstention on this one. All right. We pass. We back. Yes. Jervet, have the next one. Oh, I'm all set. Quick yes or no. Were you the person present at the budget hearings this uh, February? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I see my treasurer and secretary. Alright, that's all I wanted to know. Representative Lima. Alright, um, I see one of the
of the events is not a written all when exactly it's yes, all. Um, year 263B, um, Family Day Campus slash Fall Fest. Yes, that's more become um, a Fall Fest right. originally when I became president. Right. My question is, um, because basically I just want to make sure you have enough time to go to the Finance Commission um, to get money for that. When exactly is that in the fall? <coughs> um, we usually do it around October, beginning of November, by the time students get back to campus. And when we lose returning, so it's fall. All right. Thank you. Closing remarks, Treasurer Day. Nothing. That was a call question. Yeah, it's okay. This is the last one. We don't have a call question. Uh, no further discussion on this budget. On this budget. All the favor of approving this budget, say aye. 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 We'll say no. Abstentions. We have Representative Ford and Representative William of Spain, the most passive. Thank you. Thank you again for your patience. And the last one here is uh, Visa Visiting International Students Association. Hi, guys. Hi. Um, so, some information. Visa did not turn in a letter to say whether or not they were satisfied or not satisfied. So, for the first time today, we will hear their official response about their budget. Go down. Would you like me to introduce yourself? Okay, hi, I'm Jackie. I'm the treasurer of the Department. I'm Kelly, I'm the president. We want to apologize. Um, we want to apologize for not turning in our budget hearing. It was totally um, our bad. We're sorry. So we are actually completely satisfied with our budget. We know and we understand all the cuts that were made because we didn't use the money. Cool, you just uh, said that over Mary. <laughs> and is there any discussion? Any discussion on the budget? No further discussion on the budget. All those in favor of approving the budget say aye. 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 Say no. Extension, no one passes. That was your punishment. You stayed the whole way. <laughs>
Parliament. One last meeting before elections. McLemore sold out! Woo!